Raj, uh, thank you for joining in today. I really appreciate your time and being a um, part of our Corporality Summit. Um, My pleasure. My pleasure. So uh, today we decided to discuss and, you know, your journey, like where, where did all this started, your entrepreneurial journey? Well, uh, in my early days, back when I was uh, in my early 20s, uh, I was lucky enough to get a job here in Australia with a big shopping centre called Roselands. And Roselands uh, had a major tenant called Grace Brothers. They don't exist anymore, but they're like a Maya store. And uh, I guess I was 21 and 22, and I was fortunate enough to, um, to learn the trade of advertising and direct response marketing when I had the job at this shopping centre. Um, what happens is that in shopping centres, as you would know, like a Westfield-style shopping centre, all of the stores in that shopping centre are just hoping and praying that whoever's running the place is going to bring a lot of people in. Right. <laughs> and so it was, uh, it was my job, daunting as it was at the young age of 21 or 22, to put promotions on and bring a lot of people into the shopping centre. And we would, you know, bring all the TV stars in and we any movie stars that were coming from overseas, uh, we would always get them to appear on stage. And, yeah, it was quite a good learning curve because I could see that just by choosing a personality from a show like Neighbours, for example, I mean, Neighbours wasn't around at that time, but let's just say it was a TV show like Neighbours, by simply picking one of those stars and getting them to appear on stage on a Thursday night, we could have five or 10,000 people turn up to the shopping centre. Right. And I thought, to myself, I thought to myself, this is this is getting a direct response. This is something that happens immediately. And I right. guess from that point that point onwards, I started to learn direct response marketing, which is all about doing something today and getting a direct response. Hmm. And I always believe speed is everything. You know, in modern days, people want like answer yesterday. To be honest, right? So yeah. if they are asking answer yesterday and you are responding twenty days later. It's not a good marketing at the first place. A customer service started making more sense to people and more important for the people. So that brings to my next question. You know, you've been all your life in marketing. And what do you think about brand positioning? Oh, very important. Absolutely. Uh, in fact, not just very important, but vital. Absolutely vital. The only thing I do say, Priya, is that um, if you're a small business owner, you probably don't have deep pockets to create a long-term brand um, just by itself. Uh, hmm. you've, got, you've got to put food on the table at the same time as building a brand. Right. Um, it's different with Toyota or McDonald's or Coca-Cola or Kellogg's. I mean, they can sponsor the Olympics and they can do all of the brand building with the fancy jingles and so forth because they can still put food on the table even if this week has not been a record week because they've established that brand over time. But for small businesses, whilst brand building is absolutely vital, you've got to, yeah, in my, I'm, I'm biased because that's the nature of my business, but you've got to match that brand building with a lot of focus on what we call direct response marketing. Mm. And direct response marketing is putting a Facebook ad on today or letterbox brochure or TV or radio, whatever it might be, but doing it today and putting food on the table tomorrow. <laughs> Right, right. And I, I believe brand positioning is more like a journey, right? So you have to show that, go through that journey, and it has to be parallel going while you are putting food on the table at the same time. You know, it's yeah. you can't say like, I finished this and then I'll do that. So that will never happen, no, isn't no, it? No, no you're, right. Right? you're right. Yeah. So, I mean, we connected on more like a, you know, more event and in-person event we started talking about. What do you think, like, why do you think you joined the event and what will make you sure, like, I want to do this and I should go this in-person event? Well, I can see that the event that you're putting on, the summit uh, in Sydney, um, covers the full spectrum of what a business owner needs to focus on. I um, mean, you've got a wonderful, wonderful array of speakers and those speakers cover just about every business topic you could think of. So uh, whoever's watching this, if they're a business owner, I think that they should really seriously think about coming. And I know that you would expect me to say that because I'm one of the speakers, um, but you really have. You put together a, a very, very good smorgasbord of speakers that cover just about everything in business for anyone who runs a business. I think it'll be very valuable. Uh, in my own instance, I'll be showing people uh, something really, really simple, really, really simple, and that is how to get more customers fast. Um, and the, 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 the model that I have, the direct response model that I have is proven. Uh, I've got a few wrinkles here, so I've been around the block a few times. Okay, <laughs> I've been doing this for quite some time. 
and made a bucket load of mistakes. And when mm. you've made all those mistakes, um, then you pretty much know what works and what doesn't. And whilst I can never guarantee to someone that you implement this formula and you'll get rich because there's all sorts of variables, you know, um, yeah, the formula that I'll be giving everyone at the summit is something that's worked over and over and over and over again. And let's face it, it doesn't matter where we are in our journey of our career or our business. Uh, if you stumble across a formula that works, wouldn't you want to just grab it? Wouldn't you want to swap? Wouldn't you want to just swipe that formula and implement it into your business? Well, that's what I'll be doing. For sure. And I mean, with my personal experience, I would say like I've been in marketing uh, for last nine years, my own business, 18 years I spent in corporate on different uh, arena. But, you know, it's still I'm still learning. Learning is never ending and it's a journey anyway. You have to continue learning as long as you can. And with this time frame, when I started communicating, I really got a lot of nuggets, you know, myself for my own business. So I really appreciate your uh, support and knowledge you are sharing with me. And I'm sure their audience will also get a lot uh, when they will come and see the entire day with you. Um, I cannot uh, wait for that. So what do you think people should actually consider when it comes to the, in, you know, in-person events when they are actually struggling with their decision? Uh, sorry, uh, Priya, sorry. What, what what am I thinking about? How in person should... events when people are because nowadays, as you can see, that Zoom Zoom meeting is like becoming very common. Everybody wants to join the web webinars and you know online meetings rather than going in person meeting. What difference it will make for people to oh. come in person to this <clears throat> event we we are inviting to? Um, a massive difference uh, in my view uh, because of COVID. Of course, we've all become Zoom experts. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, uh, in my instance, it'll be uh, massive because what I tend to do throughout the full day that we're together is invite people to uh, volunteer for a hot seat. And by hot seat, I mean they physically come up on stage and they'll sit on the stool and I'll bring up their website on the big screen. And then uh, in a sarcastic but friendly way, I will tell them what's wrong with their website, okay? Right. Because more than, more than likely their website has been put together by this guy, okay? And <laughs> I, I call him a bearded hipster. And right. uh, it's wonderful that he's put their website together, but he's still using pimple cream. Uh, right. And so I say to them, look, listen to the old guy here who has put together four million uh, marketing campaigns, most of them, of course, in the last 20 years with websites. And let me show you the components of the website that you're missing out on. And you can't do that on Zoom because what we do is we get interaction from the audience. And I will say to them, on this particular website up on the big screen of the person who's come up and volunteered, tell me, can you see a problem solution headline? And guess what? There's not one there. And then I'll mm -hmm. say to them, can you see a testimonial from one of the customers? No, there's not one there. And so on and so forth. So what it is, we make it very interactive, which is impossible to do the same thing on Zoom. It's very, very, very big difference in terms of being there in person. Right. And I've also noticed majority of people are actually getting so often distracted. And uh, I do join a lot of e online events, given the nature of the mar market today. And notice they are like busy emailing, responding, doing something else while the speaker is talking about it. I always wonder how much you actually retain the information with doing by doing the multitasking at the same time. And Spot while... On. Yeah, why are you let, avoiding? Let, let, let me ask you this, Priya. Would you prefer to see Paul McCartney on Zoom or be there in the room? I would like to see people on the room and I would like to go myself because I prefer more in person. I build a relationship. I watch your body language. I, I watch in, not just your words, <laughs> I'm watching entire body language and actually uh, persevering based on that, like how I'm going to work with you. You know, yes. what kind of a person you are, what kind of a personality? Is it a really like-minded people? Like people say you should talk to your like-minded people, right? Is it yep. right, really like-minded people? That collaboration, how am I going to build without knowing you fully? Yeah, well, that's what I think is wonderful about your event. I mean, uh, whether someone decides to come to one day or two days or three days before whatever amount of time they come, they've got this incredible opportunity to network. Um, and I love what you put together in terms of a lot of copy for this event. It's all about learning how to grow your business, but at the same time, hanging around the right people. I, I've got six millennial children, and of course, um, uh, they know everything. <laughs> I, I, don't know, <laughs> I don't know where they got that from. It must have been their mother. But anyway, look, they know everything, of course. And uh, 
Uh, I keep on saying to them, look, show me your friends and I'll show you your future, which is not my phrase. It's a famous phrase, of course. Um, but the thing is, is that this event, you're going to be having everyone who comes to this is obviously an entrepreneur. And so, therefore, as a business owner, if you're at an event like this where you're mixing with like-minded people, goodness knows what you know opportunities might arise from it. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I always say that, you know, we both are doing business. It doesn't mean we are like-minded. Finding a like-minded people, it requires effort. So make that effort, I would believe. You know? Good point. Yeah, good point. Yeah. So any two cents for people who are starting now um, in their entrepreneurial journey in a, as a startup? <clears throat> Sorry, any advice that I would give anyone? Yes. Yeah. Um, well, aside from hang around with the right people, and generally speaking, um, my little phrase there, I mean, all of us speakers have our own little catchphrases. So therefore, I mean, you know, I'm sure, that, I'm sure there's somebody watching this rolling their eyes going, oh, no, he's going to give me a, a catchphrase. Um, <laughs> but but I, I tend to say, um, look, hang around with people who say, why not? Not people who say, oh, why? And generally speaking, um, you know, I, I tend to advocate say yes to crazy. Uh, it's the crazy ideas that, you know, normally get up. Now, I'm not saying for a moment that we all should live by the mantra of ready, fire, aim. I'm not saying that. Uh, do your homework and make sure you do your research. But, uh, yeah, I mean, jump in the deep end a few times because uh, even if it's not the retirement package, even if it's not the big win, you're going to learn a lot by actually biting off more than you can chew. And so, therefore, my advice to anyone who's, you know, perhaps a bit younger in business, uh, A, hang around the right people, uh, and normally they're right-brained people with left-brain um, um, support. So me, for example, I'm, I'm in the creative side, so therefore I'm going to be right-brained. But because I know spreadsheets really bore me, I'll make sure I've got someone behind me that is putting together... <laughs> putting together all the logic for me and the maths and science, okay? So, yes, hang around the right people. And the second thing is, you know, Priya, this sounds like a boring principle, but uh, live by deadlines. I mean, uh, if I have a supplier, and sometimes over the years we've had suppliers that look like that uh, who say, oh, yeah, I'll get back to you. I say, no, 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 when will you get back to me? I'll get back to you in a week or two. No, 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 what? It's got to be Friday at 3 o'clock. And if they miss that deadline, that's fine. They'll make another deadline. But make sure no matter what you do, whatever the project is, um, you've got a deadline. And the reason I say that is because when I was the marketing guy at Woolworths, they put me through a course, which was basically a deadline course. And they wow. they would say to me, when are you going to have the plan ready for the opening of the Rockhampton Woolworths? And I would say, because I was younger in those days, oh, by, you know, a couple of weeks' time, they go, no, when? And I'd have to say Thursday. they say, what time Thursday? And so yes. if you commit to Thursday at 4 o'clock, you've got yourself a deadline. Yeah, yeah. And that's how, you know, leaders become leader because they honor that uh, promises, you know. That's yeah. very and, and by important. the way, and not only do they honor it, but they put it in writing. Now, back in the day, yeah. of course, you know, you put it in writing because you might have had a pen. But these days, of course, it's all emails and texts. Doesn't matter how you do it, but make sure you put that deadline in writing because then you have an obligation. Hmm. Hmm. And that's the that should be your work culture in your, you know, practice of whatever you are doing in your workforce you know so it should be there at everywhere i guess so thank you so much for joining in today john really appreciate and it was short and sweet and there will be a bigger conversation coming up later on but today thank you so much for your joining in my pleasure